Good morning, afternoon. I'm Brady Landis. And I'm Ryan Myers. Today's February 8th, 2017. So, Brady, did you hear about the returning members of the Board of Education? I haven't. Well, Adam did a story on it. Adam? I had the honor of being able to sit down to talk with the president of our Board of Education, Tom Bellavia. Our current members on the board are Thomas Bellavia as president, Larry Knox as vice president, Susan Casaleggi as treasurer, Douglas Beck as director, Michael McNeil as director, Patricia Zahn as director. Mr. Bellavia, Ms. Casaleggi, and Ms. Zahn will continue to be with us on the board for the next three years as they are running uncontested. Here's what Mr. Bellavia had to say. First of all, congratulations Thank on you. getting another three years in the uh, Board of Education. My first question is, what is the main job uh, for being a, a member of the Board of Education? So, uh, you know, the main duties of the board is to set the policies for the district, kind of to set the direction that we want to go in, mm -hmm. and then work with the superintendent and the rest of the administration and all the employees of the district to try and uh, try and reach those goals. I'm currently serving um, my second year as president. I help um, coordinate the meetings with the superintendent. We go over the agenda for the next month or so. We actually have an officers meeting with the vice president and treasurer, along with Dr. Brotherton. Why did you decide to? continue to want to be a member of the Board of Education. Mm -hmm. What made you want to go an extra three years? One of the factors was going to be how the election for the tax and bond uh, turned out. Mm -hmm. uh, I figured if it didn't pass, then I would really give it a shot and want to stay another three years to help make sure we were able to fight through whatever troubles we <laughs> had to fight through. But obviously, and thankfully, they did pass. But I gave it a lot of thought and, mm -hmm. and uh, decided I wanted con to continue doing what we were doing. I uh, was very proud of and excited about the progress we've made. Mm -hmm. The vote in, in the district's favor is, um, I think, was a reflection of what we've done. Uh, and we, I mean the entire school district, right, uh, yeah. the students, teachers, uh, the, all the staff of, in the direction that we're going in. And I think it was, it showed that the public was happy about where we're going as well. Right. So that, that was, that helped um, certainly in, in, in uh, making my decision a little bit easier that with that kind of support from the community, um, kind of that we were going in the right direction and I wanted to continue to be a part of that. What is the main thing these next three years that you would like to accomplish? You know, we've made a lot of progress uh, in the past five or six years. We've opened a lot of doors for a lot of a lot of students and, and offering a lot of a lot more courses, a lot of different things that they could um, try, whether it be Project Lead the Way, the CAPS program, etc., um, and and just different things that we're doing throughout the district. I want to help continue building that foundation um, so that we can have all these great things continue to be in place for for years to come. Based on the uh, the bond issue that was passed, we're going to have the ability to improve the facilities a little bit, uh, to add some room where we need it, and, uh, and that, that's an exciting um, uh, time for the district as well. What is basically your favorite thing about being a member of the Board of Education? I think just being on the board um, and really being able to see the growth of the students growth of, of the district. I think all of this, the board members would say some of our most uh, fun time is, is uh, board meetings when we get to see uh, some of the kids come up and, uh, and share in some of the things that they've done, uh, whether they be student of the month mm -hmm. or some of the groups that they've been involved in, robotics and theater and, and et cetera, et cetera, that, that uh, uh, some of the successes they had and, and really get to see that. And, and it's, it's great to see everything that the students are doing from the little kids up, to, up through high school. Um, and it's great to see the excitement that they have and, and share in some of that. And okay. know that you've been part, a small part, but mm -hmm. still a part in, in helping to uh, maintain um, that, 
um, atmosphere and culture that, that allows kids to grow and to have the opportunities that they do have here. All right. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Sure. Thanks for having thank me. Thank you very much. Sure. According to WhiteHouse.gov, in Donald Trump's first week in office, he signed multiple executive orders and memorandums. One of those orders was signed on Friday, January 27, 2017, regarding the immigration of refugees and immigrants. Based off of Politico.com, this order cuts the number of refugees allowed in the United States from 110,000 to 50,000. Also, this order suspends the U.S. Refugee Admissions Program for 120 days, which identifies and processes refugees for proper resettlement in the United States. Based off of News360.com, the most intercontinental change since this executive action is the suspension of entrants of all immigrants and non-immigrants for 90 days from the following countries. Iran, Iraq, Syria, Sudan, Libya, Yemen, and Somalia. These restrictions also apply to green card holders and people with valid visas. I spoke with some of the local civilians to see what their thoughts were on Trump's first week executive actions. Well, I think if you were to put it into a broader context, it really kind of demonstrates the ongoing tension between freedom and security. Um, the Trump administration maintains that they're taking this action for the purposes of national security. But of course, the impact on individual freedom and liberty is what is causing all the protests. Um, I feel that it's incorrect because it's not right to do. And I think that anybody should just ask themselves, is this the right thing to do? And it's really unfair to people who just wanted to move into here to be safe from all of the pillaging and violence that they wanted to move away from. I think immigrants the United States is like a place where immigrants feel like they have a place where there's hope. And now that he's taken that away, I feel like there is nothing for them to look forward to or like try to like be free. I think this immigration policy is very good in ensuring the uh, safety of the American people. Uh, Donald Trump said multiple times on his campaign he was looking to put a ban on certain countries linked with Islamic terrorism. And as history will tell us, former presidents have done the exact same thing when terrorism has uh, come up. Jimmy Carter did the exact same thing, banning Iranian immigration during the Iran hostage crisis and terrorists rising up. Obama, um, I believe, blocked immigration from Iraqis. And the list of risky countries that Trump blocked, I believe, was even made by the Obama administration or Obama himself. So. I am completely fine with this uh, new immigration policy. So Ryan, have you heard about the Schumann Water Project? The what? Well, lucky for you, I did a story on it. Well, let's see it. The Schumann Water Project helps build water pumps and gives water to those who need it in third world countries. The Water Project gives water to people who don't have good drinking water, and ways of donating are when you purchase eligible items on Amazon or just donating to a family in need. Information at SchumannWaterProject.org. Good job, Brady. I think I'm going to do my part. All right, well, let's take a commercial break so we both can. Hey, what class are you going to? I'm going to Bosnia and American Studies. What do you even do in that class? What do we even do? We do tons of fun activities. Like what? Well, we have group discussions about Bosnia and American culture. We eat food from different Bosnian backgrounds. We have guest speakers who video chat with us about Bosnian heritage, and we all know everyone loves field trips. But how can I join? Go talk to your counselor today about joining next semester. So I really want to join a club. <sighs> have you thought about joining the GSA? GSA? Don't you have to be gay to join that? Well, not necessarily. The GSA is just sort of an open place where everybody can go. It doesn't matter what you identify as or what your orientation is. It's a safe place for everyone. Really? When is it? It's on Thursdays. Every Thursday in Mr. Jenny's room 50. Man, I think I'm going to join. Man, I loved creative film. Too bad there's not another class I could take. And you should try TV production today. Well, what's that? Why, it's only the coolest thing ever. You get to be an anchor for the school news, work the school camera, meet cool people, and make funny parodies. Wow, that sounds pretty cool. 
Go see your counselor, then... Come see me today. And we're back. So, Brady, have you heard about the Athlete of the Week? I have, but let's hear Isaiah's story on them. Sounds good. Take it away, Isaiah. Every week, a high school athlete is nominated to be the spotlight of the 590 Fan Athlete of the Week and is posted on Inside STL's website. Recently, one of Afton High School students, Jarrell Williams, was the recipient of that spotlight. I had a chance to speak with Jarrell and see what his achievement means to him. What would you say is the best part about attaining this achievement? I say sharing it with my family. I even spoke to Jarrell's coach. This is my fourth year coaching Jarrell. I don't know that I've met a player that works as, is as dedicated to basketball as what Jarrell is. It really is a nice award to reward him for his um, work on the basketball court. This is Isaiah Wilson signing off. Nice work, Isaiah. All right, now here's uh, Ezra's story on Afton's Student of the Month. Hey, Afton, I got to talk to the Student of the Month. So let's see what he has to say about his award. How did you become Student of the Month? Um, honestly, I don't know. Um, I wasn't really expecting it. Um, I guess uh, I showed up pretty much every day. I worked hard, um, got good grades. Uh, and I we just worked really hard, kept them up, uh, talked to teachers if I needed help and things like that. Uh, talked to other students about their tips for studying and I kind of just did what works best for me. Do you have any recommendations for other people who want to be student of the month? Um, really just, you know, you got to work hard. Um, find help if you need it and then just go from there. Okay. Well, that's all the time I have for today. Thank you so much for your time. This is Azra Besik from Cougar News. Great work, Azra. Now it's time for this week's Teacher of the Week. What's up, Afton? This week's Teacher of the Week is Mr. Moiko. I've been teaching 17 years, and this is my 17th year in Afton. What classes do you teach? American Government, World History 3, and AP Politics and Government. What's your favorite part about Afton? The students. I was also given the opportunity to speak with some of his students to see what they thought about Mr. Moiko. Uh, what do you like about Mr. Moiko? Um, Mr. Moiko is hes a really unique teacher. He always likes to switch up the way he teaches his lessons, put a little humor into it, um, always make sure that we learn the subject and do a lot of projects and papers, which I enjoy. What do you like about Mr. Moiko? Um, I like his way of teaching, how he actually gets up and like has discussions and like involves us in it and has us answer questions. And I like the way how he like makes learning fun. Thanks for watching my story. This is Ryan from Cougar News, signing off. Good job, Ryan. Well, that about wraps it up for us. I'm Ryan Myers. And I'm Brady Landis. And this, this is, is Cougar, Cougar News, News signing off. off.